1965, five years old. My mom tells me in a loud, scary, life-threatening voice to stop scratching my coochie smorcher. I become terrified that I've scratched it off down there. I do not touch myself again, not even in the bath. I'm afraid of the water getting in and filling me up so I explode. I put band-aids over my coochie to prevent the water from getting in, to prevent things from entering me. I imagine a stop, a bathtub plug. I sleep with three pairs of happy, heart-patterned cotton underpants on underneath my snap-up pajamas. I still want to touch myself sometimes, but I don't. Memory, seven years old. Edgar Montaigne, who is 10, gets angry at me and punches me with all of his might between my legs. It feels like he breaks my entire self. I limp home. I can't be. My mama asks me what's wrong with my coochie smorcher, and when I tell her what Edgar did to me, she yells at me and tells me to never let anyone touch me down there again. I try to explain to her, he didn't touch it, mama. He punched it. Memory, nine years old. I play on the bed, bouncing and falling, and impale my coochie snorcher on the bedpost. I make a high-pitched, screaming noise that comes straight from my coochie snorcher's mouth. I get taken to the hospital, and they sew it up from where it's been torn apart. Memory, 10 years old. I'm at my father's house, and he's having a party. Everybody's drinking. I'm playing alone in the basement, trying on my new white cotton bra and underpants that my father's girlfriend gave me. Suddenly, my father's best friend, this big man, Alfred, comes up from behind me and pulls down my new cotton underpants. I scream, I kick, I try to fight him off, but he already gets it in. My father's there then, and there's a gun, and a loud, horrible noise, and blood all over Alfred and me. Lots of blood. I'm sure. My coochie snorcher has finally fallen out. Alfred is paralyzed for life, and my mother doesn't let me see my father for seven years. Memory, 13 years old. My coochie snorcher is a very bad place. It's a place of pain, nastiness, punching, invasion, blood. It's a site for mishaps, a bad luck zone. I imagine a freeway between my legs, and I'm traveling, going far away from here. Memory, 16 years old. There's this gorgeous 24-year-old woman in our neighborhood, and I stare at her all the time. One day, she invites me into her car. She asks me if I like to kiss boys, and I tell her I don't like that. Then, she says she wants to show me something, and she leans over kisses me so softly on the lips with her lips, puts her tongue in my mouth. Wow. She asks me if I want to come over, and then she kisses me again, tells me to relax, to feel it, to let our tongues feel it. She asks my mama if I can spend the night, and my mother is delighted that such a beautiful, successful woman has taken an interest in me. I'm scared. I can't wait. Her apartment is fantastic. She's got it hooked up. It's the 70s. The beads, the mood lights, the fluffy pillows. I decide right there and then that I want to be a secretary like her when I grow up. She makes a vodka for herself and then asks me what I want to drink. I say the same as she's having. And she says she doesn't think my mama would want me drinking vodka. And I tell her she probably wouldn't want me kissing girls either. <laughs> and the pretty lady makes me a drink. <laughs> then, she changes into a chocolate satin teddy. She's so beautiful. I say, you look great. And she says, so do you. I say, but I only have this white cotton bra and underpants. And then she dresses me, slowly, in another satin teddy. It's lavender, like the first soft days of spring. Alcohol has gone to my head, and I'm loose and ready. There's a picture over her bed of this naked black woman with a big afro. 
She gently and slowly lays me on the bed, and just our bodies rubbing makes me calm. Then she does everything to me and my coochie snorcher that I always thought was nasty before. <laughs> and wow, I'm so hot, so wild. She says, your vagina, untouched by man, smells so nice, so fresh. I wish I could keep it that way forever. I get crazy, wild, and then the phone rings. And of course, it's my mama. I'm sure she knows. She catches me at everything. <laughs> I'm breathing so heavy, and I try to act normal, and when I get on the phone, she asks me, what is wrong with you? Have you been running? And I say, no, mama. <laughs> Exercising. <laughs> <laughs> then she tells the beautiful secretary to make sure that I'm not around any boys. And the lady tells her, trust me, there's no boys around here. <laughs> Afterwards, the gorgeous lady teaches me everything about my coaching starter. She makes me play with myself in front of her and teaches me all the different ways to give myself pleasure. She's very thorough. <laughs> she tells me all the different ways to give myself pleasure so I never have to rely on a man. In the morning, I'm worried that I become a butch because I am so in love with her. She laughs, but I never see her again. I realized later that she was my surprising, unexpected, politically incorrect salvation. She transformed my sorry ass coochie soldier and raised it into a kind of heaven.